hey, let's make an elevator simulator. It starts on the first floor and then climbs to the second floor and then the doors open. This is made with P5JS using JavaScript and I've got the code over here, but let's make it from scratch. Okay, we have nothing. We're gonna start with, uh, notice we're in 3D mode. We're gonna start with a box. Now you know if you just use a single argument, you'll get a cube. Here's our cube. We don't want a cube though because a, an elevator car is not cubic. It looks more like, say, a width of 50 and a height of 100 and a depth of 50. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, kind of, although you can't really see that it's a rectangular prism because it's not moving. So let's see what we can do to get it to move. We can use translate. Uh, we're not moving it left to right. We are moving it, let's move it um, down some. We'll move it to um, 200, and then we're not gonna move it on the Z axis. Okay, so there it is a little lower. You can see the, uh, the top of it now. Um, now, what if we have a variable that keeps track of the car's Y axis position? So we'll say uh, let car Y equals 200 and we'll change this to car Y and then we'll run. Okay, still works. We will now, um, after we draw it, we'll raise it a little bit. So we say car Y minus equal one and now it climbs. It'll never stop though. So let's just arbitrarily choose the Y position of floor one and floor two. So let's do something like this. Uh, we'll put the lowest floor at 200 and the tallest, the highest floor at minus 200. And we'll start the car at floor one, which is element zero of the array. Um, make sure this still works. Good. Okay, um, maybe make the car a little bit more interesting to look at with some color. And we'll use the RGBA function and we'll go with um, these values. There, a little bit bluish and it has a, a um, an alpha channel value of 0 0.2. Zero would be completely transparent, one would be opaque. Uh, and this is 75% uh, of red and green and 100% of blue. And that's why it looks more blue than it does red and green. Um, what if we make it stop when it gets to floor two? Well, we could have an if statement. Only then will we decrement the value. So let's see if it stops now. La, 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 la. Good, it stopped. Okay, um, what else do we want to do? I think we're, we want to add some doors that open and the dimensions of the door are going to be expressed in terms of the dimensions of the car. So let's define the dimensions of the car by doing this. And then here, we'll change to use that. Okay, see if it still works. Yes, it does. And now we can uh, specify the dimensions of the door. And the door, the door's width is equal to half the car's width. And its height is equal to the car's height. And the depth is an arbitrarily chosen value of five units. All right, there's the door. Um, now I think I want to make functions for drawing the car and drawing the door. I'm gonna do an extract method. And this is going to be a global function and this is gonna be called draw car. 
Okay, and then we're going to have another one. Draw doors. There they are. I think I'll probably move these guys down to here. Okay, and I just like to see if it still works, and it does. All right. Let's change the stroke weight here to two. See if we like the looks of that a little bit better. Yeah, I think so. And um, now for drawing the doors, we'll use a stroke weight of one for them. And for their appearance, I'm going to copy that, but I'm going to make them more green and a little bit less transparent. And a door, uh, for the moment, I'm going to make it out of a box and I'm going to say door dot width, door dot depth. And let's run and just see if we see a door here. Yeah, there's a door. It's in the wrong place though. So we're going to need to move both doors to the front of the car with the translate. So let's do that. We'll do translate, not on X yet, um, but on Y, we need to go how much here? Um, I would say half of the car's depth, because you see it's, considering the z-axis, it's, it's centered, so it needs to come to the front of the car. So half the car's depth. Um, let's start with that. Oh, that's interesting. X, Y, Z. I think I meant that to be on Z. There we go. Okay, is it sticking out a little too far? Uh, I want to subtract the door, the door's depth, so the front of the doors is flush with the front of the car. That's better. Okay, so that's the right width for the first door. It's just in the wrong place, um, but this is where both doors need to be, and then the rest has to do with moving them uh, right or left. And we also have to have animation for the door opening. Let's do this. Let's have a variable that keeps track of how much the doors are open. That goes from zero to one. Then what we'll do here, once we reach the second floor, then we'll start the door opening. So we'll say an else here, else if the doors are not completely open, then we're going to open them slightly. Okay, that just modifies this variable door open, doesn't really change anything yet. So we'll do something down here. We have to now calculate how far the doors will travel. Let's create a variable for that. And they travel half the car width. Then we want to calculate how far the door is uh, moved depending on where we are in the animation. So uh, as a function of the door open variable that goes from zero to one. Let's say const the x axis door displacement and car width. So you see it, it's off by one quarter of the car width. So that's what this part is for. Car width over four plus the door travel amount. It travels half the width of the car, as you see on the line above, um, times the door open. So, door open. So, if the door is not open at all, it simply is displaced by um, 
one quarter of the car width. And now we'll need another translate. And we're going to translate on translate on X by this X door displacement that we created above here. Not moving on Y, not moving on Z. All right, let's see what we have. The door is in the right place, at least the right door is. Let's see when we get to floor two if it moves to the right. There it goes. Okay, that's beautiful. So that's we got one door working. Now I want to um, not duplicate code, so I'm going to make a loop and um, make both doors inside the loop. And they are kind of mirror images of the other. Um, one's moving to the right and the other's moving to the left. So what I'm going to do here is make a loop using one and minus one. So you'll see what I'm doing here in a moment. For each of the one and minus one, and I'm calling this the sign, like whether it's positive or negative. And then we're going to do, we're going to have a push and a pop because we don't want the transformation that we do on the first door to affect the transformation we do on the second door. Then I'm going to move these inside here. Uh, I guess I shouldn't indent that. And now, um, if I run what we have, it shouldn't change anything. Um, but there are now two doors. Only they're in the same place. And they're both going to move to the right. But if I use this sign, which for the rightmost door is positive one, and for the leftmost door is negative one, and I use that to multiply against the door displacement, then the first door will move to the right, second door will move to the left. Check it out. Here we go. There. Nice. Okay, let's see if I've covered everything I wanted to cover. Mm -hmm. um, so here's our setup. Here's draw. We set the background. And we position the car. We draw the car. We draw the doors. We move the car if it's still not at um, floor two. Um, once it's arrived, then we adjust the door open amount uh, until it becomes all the way open. Uh, for drawing the car, we set the stroke weight, we choose the color. It's mostly transparent and mostly blue. And then we draw the car with its width, height, and depth using the box function. Here in draw doors, it's a little heavier stroke weight. Oh, I meant for this to be one. Um, and then we translate the door um, car depth over two minus door depth. Right. Um, let me put a comment in here. Bring the doors to the front of the car. That's what that does. And then the color. Calculate the door travel amount. It travels half the width of the car. And calculate the door displacement, which is, it starts at one quarter, and then it goes by the door travel amount times the door uh, the times the door open um, number that's from zero to one and then this loop executes twice and we push and pop to isolate the translates from each other and we move the door by this amount either right or left depending on the one or minus one and we draw it with the box uh, I'm thinking of doing a lot with this simulator but this is a good starting point and I'll put the, a link to where you can run this in the description. See you next time.